So the first question is how fast do I need to acquire the signal? Uh, the sample rate is the speed at which the device can acquire a signal. I know when we acquire a waveform signal, we actually see the nice waveform, but you have to realize that the sampled signal is really just a discrete array of sampled values, and each individual sample is taken at a specific rate or sample rate. Uh, let's say I have a sample rate of one kilohertz, so that would mean I would take a thousand samples per second. So, how do we actually figure out what sample rate we need? Some of you have probably heard of the Nyquist theorem, which mainly states that you must sample at greater than two times the maximum frequency component of your signal in order to accurately represent the frequency of that signal. Again, this will only let us represent the frequency of the signal. As you can see in the slide, even at twice our highest frequency, we're missing everything from our sine wave besides the peaks. So, in order to properly represent the shape of the signal, and not just the frequency, we must sample between 5 to 10 times greater than the maximum frequency component of the signal. In the next few slides, we'll illustrate the Nyquist theorem with various examples. From the last slide, we realized we'll need a DAC device capable of sampling at least five times the highest frequency of the signal I'm measuring in order to fully portray its shape and frequency. Keeping that in mind, let's look at some hardware specs. For example, the USB 6000 can sample at a maximum rate of 10 kilo samples per second, or 10,000 samples per second, and the 9205 can sample at 250,000 samples per second. This means that the USB 6000 can accurately measure a signal that has a frequency of 5 kHz. But don't forget that this means we'll only be able to accurately portray the signal's frequency and not the shape. So in order to get an accurate picture of the shape and frequency, we can really only measure signals up to 2 kHz. Using the same principle with the 9205, we can get an accurate measurement that includes shape and frequency of a 50 kHz signal even though it can take up to 250,000 samples per second. This is important to keep in mind when thinking of the signals that you'll be measuring. One key thing to understand is the two main architectures a DAC device can use when it comes to sampling on multiple channels. In a multiplex sampling architecture, there's a multiplexer, only one amplifier, and one analog to digital converter, or ADC. This means that all of the channels must share one ADC. Using only one ADC makes this architecture very cost effective. You'll usually see this used on our M-series devices as well as some X-series devices. The other possible architecture is called a simultaneous sampling architecture. This is when every channel has its own amplifier and ADC. This architecture is more expensive, but it does allow you to perform simultaneous sampling on all of your channels. Knowing all this, it's important to keep in mind that if your DAC device is multiplexed, your sample rate will change when measuring with multiple channels at the same time. These can be found in your DAC device's specifications under the sample rates. Sample rate is measured in samples per second or samples per second per channel when acquiring from multiple channels. Real-world analog signals have many frequency components. Oftentimes, these frequency components are greater than our Nyquist frequency, which is just the frequency we can get an accurate measure of. So what happens when we try to measure a signal with frequency components higher than our signal frequency? We'll end up getting a misrepresentation of our signal frequency known as an alias. The formula for determining the alias frequency is the absolute value of the closest integer multiple of the sampling frequency minus the input frequency. Let's go through a concrete example to illustrate the use of this formula. Assume we have a signal with frequency components of 25 Hz, 70 Hz, 160 Hz, and 510 Hz. Our sample rate is 100 Hz. Therefore, our Nyquist frequency is 50 Hz, and any frequencies above 50 Hz will appear as an alias. So, in our example, we will correctly measure the 25 Hz frequency component, but the 70 Hz, 160 Hz, and 510 Hz frequency components will all alias. Let's use the above formula to determine what frequencies our aliases will show up at. First, we'll calculate the alias frequency for a 70 Hz signal. 
The closest integer multiple of the sampling frequency to 70 hertz is 100 hertz. So the formula will look like this. Frequency 2 equals 100 minus 70, which equals 30 hertz. Therefore, the 70 hertz component of our signal will show up at 30 hertz. Now, let's repeat the procedure for the remaining two components of our signal. The closest integer multiple of the sampling frequency to 160 hertz is 200 hertz. So, the formula looks like this. 200 minus 160 equals 40 hertz. Therefore, the 160 hertz component of our signal will show up as 40 hertz. Finally, the closest integer multiple of the sampling fr frequency to 510 hertz is 500 hertz. So the formula looks like this. 500 minus 510 equals negative 10, but we're taking the absolute value, which is 10 hertz. Therefore, the 510 hertz component of our signal will show up at 10 hertz. So how do we prevent aliasing of our signal? We can do this in two ways oversampling and filtering. Oversampling is really just taking samples faster than we need to. By doing this, we increase our Nyquist frequency and prevent the higher frequency components from aliasing. Now, this is only a viable option if your analog to digital converter can go fast enough to achieve this sample rate. Another option is filtering. The proper filter choice are low pass filters which are designed to only pass frequencies below the cutoff frequency of the filter. In this exercise, we'll see a demonstration of aliasing and how changing the sample rate can affect an input signal. We'll be using our analog input module, which is the 9215, and our analog output module, which is the 9263. These are... This is the solution walkthrough for exercise 1-1. So with this exercise, we connected, um, if you have the compact DAC hardware, we connected wires to the analog output channel 2 on the 9263 and the analog input channel 2 of the 9215 module. As you can see here, I've already connected those up. So now I'll just go to the um, VI we're supposed to open in the DAC course materials. So I've got the sample rate example VI opened up. So first step here is to um, choose your correct channels, right? So this is actually CDAC 3 module 4, but I need to change this to CDAC 1 because I'm using a different compact DAC chassis. So I'll just select uh, the analog output channel 2, and then for module 8, I will select the analog input 2. And the first step is to change um, the output frequency to 500 hertz and then the input frequency to 1500 hertz. So if I run this, uh, we can see that we're getting the correct frequency, 500. And then if I stop this and zoom in, this really looks more um, like a triangle wave. So we're really not getting the shape. And as we learned earlier, um, if we just meet the Nyquist frequency, which is two times uh, whatever we're trying to sample, we'll get the correct frequency. But to get the overall shape, we'll need to sample a lot faster. So if I increase this up to 5,000 hertz, which is 10 times the signal that we're trying to sample, I should get a better picture. So, up there you see I've got the same frequency, 500, but now my um, sample looks like a real sine wave. And so, let's just um, play around with this and see kind of a better picture of what aliasing actually does. So let's say that I change this to 750 right so um, the Nyquist frequency would actually be 375 which is lower than the analog output signal frequency so what we expect to get 
Ah, you see here? So we're not getting the correct frequency. And that's because the alias frequency is uh, 750, the absolute value of 750 minus 500, and we get 250, which is what we see here on the frequency chart. So that ends exercise 1-1. In this exercise, you opened the sample rate example VI from your course exercises folder and compared how different sample rates affected the measurement. You compared the Nyquist frequency of a signal with alias frequencies. If you had the hardware available, you located the pinouts of your device to properly connect an analog output channel to an analog input channel. The Nyquist theorem helps to determine the sample rate. What problem does this help with? The answer is C, aliasing. We've hit the end of this lesson, so to wrap it all up, we're going to have a review.